<laughs> Hi, it's me, the drama queen. It's Friday, Friday. What are the words of that song? Gotta get down on Friday, whatever. It's our first chapter Friday. It is hot. I'm wearing a hoodie in honor of uh, what I'll be reading from today, which is my firstborn child. Um, I'm sure a lot of people, oh, there's a letter in here, uh, are familiar with this one. So we're just going to jump right on in. This is the book that I actually bought. I lied. We're not going to jump in. I signed this to myself. And I think that this is one of those symbolic things that everyone should do. Okay. Now we're going to jump in. Part one. Chapter one. From where he's standing across the street, Justice can see her. Mello Taylor, ex-girlfriend, slumped over beside her bins on the damp concrete of the Farm Fresh parking lot. She's missing a shoe, and the contents of her purse are scattered around her like the guts of a pulled party popper. He knows she's stone drunk, but this is too much, even for her. Just shakes his head, remembering the judgment all over his best friend Manny's face as he left Manny's house not 15 minutes ago. The walk symbol appears. As he approaches, she opens her eyes and he waves and pulls his earbuds out just in time to hear her say, what the hell are you doing here? Justice asks himself the same question as he watches her try and fail to shift to her knees. She falls over sideways and hits her face against the car door. He drops down and reaches for her cheek, which is as red as the candy apple paint job. Damn, Mello, are you okay? She pushes his hand away. What do you care? Stung, Justice takes a deep breath. He cares a lot. Obviously, if he didn't, he wouldn't have walked a mile from Manny's house at three in the morning. Manny's of the opinion that Mello's the worst thing that ever happened to Justice, so of course he refused to give his boy a ride. All to keep his drunken disaster of an ex from driving. He should walk away right now, Justice should. But he doesn't. Jessa called me, he tells her. That's skank. Babe, don't be like that. She only called me because she cares about you. Jessa had planned to take Mello home herself, but Mel threatened to call the cops and say she'd been kidnapped if Jessa didn't drop her at her car. Mello can be a little dramatic when she's drunk. I'm totally unfollowing her, she says, case in point. In life and online, nosy bitch. Justice shakes his head again. I just came to make sure you get home okay. That's when it hits Justice that while he might succeed in getting Mello home, he has no idea how he'll get back. He closes his eyes as Manny's words ring through his head. This Captain save a whole thing is going to get you in trouble, dog. He looks Mello over. She's now sitting with her head leaned back against the car door, half asleep, mouth open. He sighs. Even drunk, just can't deny Mello's the finest girl he's ever laid eyes, not to mention hands on. She starts to tilt and Justice catches her by the shoulder to keep her from falling. She startles, looking at him wide-eyed, and just can see everything about her that initially caught his attention. Mello's dad is this Hall of Fame NFL linebacker, big black dude, but her mom is from Norway. She got Mrs. Taylor's milky Norwegian complexion, wavy hair the color of honey, and amazing green eyes that are kind of purple around the edge, but she has really full lips, a small waist, crazy curvy hips, and probably the nicest butt Just has ever seen in his life. That's part of his problem. He gets too tripped up by how beautiful she is. He never would have dreamed a girl as fine as her would be into him. Now he's got the urge to kiss her, even though her eyes are red and her hair's a mess and she smells like vodka and cigarettes and weed. But when he goes to push her hair out of her face, she shoves his hand away again. Don't touch me, Justice. She starts shifting her stuff around on the ground. Lipstick, Kleenex, tampons, one of those circular thingies with the makeup in one half and a mirror in the other. A flask. Ugh, where are my keys? Justice spots them in front of the back tire and snatches them up. You're not driving, Mello. Give them. She swipes for the keys, but falls into his arms instead. Justice props her against the car again and gathers the rest of her stuff to put it back in her bag, which is large enough to hold a week's worth of groceries. What is it with girls and purses the size of duffel bags? He unlocks the car, tosses the bag on the floor of the back seat, and tries to get Mello up off the ground. Then everything goes really wrong, really fast. First, she throws up all over the hoodie Jess is wearing, which belongs to Manny, who specifically said, don't come back here with throw up on my hoodie. 
perfect. Jess takes off the sweatshirt and tosses it in the back seat. When he tries to pick Mello up again, she slaps him hard. Leave me alone, Justice, she says. I can't do that, Mel. There's no way you'll make it home if you try to drive yourself. He tries to lift her by the armpits and she spits in his face. He considers walking away again. He could call her parents, stick her keys in his pocket, and bounce. Oak Ridge is probably the safest neighborhood in Atlanta. She'd be fine for the 25 minutes it would take Mr. Taylor to get here. But he can't. Despite Manny's assertion that Mello needs to suffer some consequences for once, leaving her here all vulnerable doesn't seem like the right thing to do. So he picks her up and tosses her over his shoulder. Mello responds in her usual delicate fashion. She screams and beats him on the back with her fists. Justice struggles to get the back door open and is lowering her into the car when he hears the whoop of a short siren and sees the blue lights. In the few seconds it takes the police car to screech to a stop behind him, Justice settles Mello into the back seat. Now she's gone catatonic. Justice can hear the approaching footsteps, but he stays focused on getting Mello strapped in. He wants it to be clear to the cop that she wasn't going to drive, so she won't be in even worse trouble. Before he can get his head out of the car, he feels a tug on his shirt and is yanked backward. His head smacks the door frame just before a hand clamps down on the back of his neck. His upper body slams into the trunk with so much force, he bites the inside of his cheek and his mouth fills with blood. Justice swallows, head spinning, unable to get his bearings. The sting of cold metal around his wrists pulls him back to reality. Handcuffs. It hits him. Mello's drunk beyond belief in the backseat of a car she fully intended to drive, yet just is the one in handcuffs. The cop shoves him to the ground beside the police cruiser as he asks if Justice understands his rights. Justice doesn't remember hearing any rights, but his ears had been ringing from the two blows to the head, so maybe he missed them. He swallows more blood. Officer, this is a big misunderstand, he starts to say, but he doesn't get to finish because the officer hits him in the face. Don't you say shit to me, you son of a bitch. I knew your punk ass was up to no good when I saw you walking down the road with that goddamn hood on. So the hood was a bad idea. Earbuds, too. Probably would have noticed he was being trailed without them. But officer, I... You keep your mouth shut. The cop squats and gets right in Justice's face. I know you're kind. Punks like you wander the streets of nice neighborhoods searching for prey. Just couldn't resist a pretty white girl who'd locked her keys in her car, could you? Except that doesn't make sense. If Mel had locked her keys in the car, Justice wouldn't have been able to get her inside of it, would he? Justice finds the officer's nameplate. Castillo, it reads, though the guy looks like a regular white dude. Mama told him how to handle this type of situation, though he must admit he never expected to actually need the advice. Be respectful. Keep the anger in check. Make sure the police can see your hands, though that's impossible right now. Officer Castillo, I mean you no disrespect. I told your punk ass to shut the fuck up. He wishes he could see Mello, get her to tell this cop the truth, but the dude is blocking his view. Now, if you know what's good for you, you won't move or speak. Resistance will only land you in deeper shit, got it? Cigarette breath and flecks of spit hit Justice's face as the cop speaks, but Justice fixes his gaze on the glowing green F of the farm fresh sign. Look at me when I'm talking to you, boy. He grabs Justice's chin. I asked you a question. Justice swallows, meets the cold blue of Officer Castillo's eyes, clears his throat. Yes, sir, he says. I got it. There you go. I don't really think I need to say much about this one. Um, check it out. <laughs>